the love of her life is about to marry another and her dreams are shattered. Oh no! Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and today I am delighted to be bringing you my July TBR. Where is the year gone? Let's not ask any further questions, let's just talk about the books. Now, I accidentally have created quite a large problem for myself and I mean large in the terms of page count. In June I read a book every single day and in crafting that TBR I opted to not include some of the larger books that were currently on my TBR because I didn't want to read them in a day. The issue being with that is I currently can't buy any more books because I'm being sensible. All the books I have left are either series or fairly hefty. So let's talk about it. I currently have a list of 18 books I want to get read. It might be 19 cannot confirm at this point um, but essentially it's sort of what's left on my TBR, a couple of review copies. I should say I'm filming this on the 24th of June, I have absolutely no idea what I managed to finish or not finish over that week uh, so this is just stuff I'm planning on reading from now until the end of July. Kicking off with the stuff that appears on every single one of my TBRs, Animorphs 24 and Animorphs 25. What's nice is for the first time in three or four months I'm not bringing an Animorphs book over from the previous month, I actually managed to read two of them. Huzzah! This will mean we're for at 25, then in August we will go to the halfway point. And I think, I think we're about to hit the ghostwriting stage, so... Stay tuned for those. The other thing I do want to finish is The Hundred Years War on Palestine. I meant to start this in May and it kind of fell by the wayside because I was trying to read a book every day and this wasn't a book that I wanted to read every day. I am going to try and finish it while we're on holiday but it might not be the best holiday reading but yes that's something I would really like to finish. On to the, the physical and non-physical books. I have my most recent bookish purchase which is Honeycomb by Joanne Harris. This was a thousand percent a cover buy. I mean it's just beautiful like ugh, I, mm, I saw it in the shop and I had book buying budget and I was like I can treat myself I can buy that. I shouldn't have done really uh, I need that 25 pounds for other things but it is absolutely gorgeous on the inside as well. This is sort of like an interlayered fairy tale and it's very hard to read printed foil writing. Yeah, it's a mosaic novel. It should be interesting. I think it's gonna read like a collection of short stories that all come together. That's my suspicion. I don't know. It's gorgeous. I'm excited to get to it. Let's make a snack back where that was. Just ignore how messy my shelves are, okay? City of Brass and The Kingdom of Copper are the books that might turn my TBR into a 19 book TBR rather than 18 um, because I might wanna read Empire of Gold as well and just read the whole trilogy. These were both gifted to me, I had them on my wish list because while I have read and loved this entire series I have never owned them uh, because I didn't buy them in hardback and then I had to wait for the paperbacks to be out. All of the above. Um, this is a fantastic trilogy, it's the David Bad trilogy. They're so good, they're very emotional. I might binge read them across one whole week so you can just watch me become an emotional mess. I very nearly bought Empire of Gold in paperback in my local bookshop but then it had like a really horrible gouge out of the back of it and I was like oh, I can't be bothered to go and ask them to order in a new one I'll just wait. Super excited for that. Gin Magic. It's gonna be great. A reread and a new read. I have The Killing Moon and The Shadow Sun by N.K. Jemisin. This is the Dream Blood duology I think. Um, I had big plans. I can't remember when I read The Killing Moon. It was in probably like January or February maybe March. I don't know but I said like oh I'm really glad I've read this because now I don't have to reread it before I read the next one because it just won't leave too big of a gap. I left too big of a gap. I can't remember what happened in The Killing Moon so I thought I would reread it before I picked up The Shadowed Sun. It's going to be a good time. The wild card of my TBR, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. I, my brother gave me this I, I need to read it because I own it and it would be very rude to my brother to not read it. Um, somebody did comment, if that was you, I thank you, commented that it, it's very snappy dialogue because he was paid by the line. Um, so here's hoping that this is not too slow. I don't know how I'm going to cope with this one. I can't remember what the last like enormous classic I read was. I honestly can't remember but this is going to be that's going to be an interesting week the week I decide to take on that bad boy. Maybe I'll see if there's an audiobook somewhere but that would take even longer. I don't, I don't know swashbuckling, it's going to be fine. This has been on the cards for quite some time. Uh, I'm rereading A Curse So Dark and Lonely and A Heart So Fierce and Broken, I had to read that in the viewfinder, uh, and then picking up A Vow So Bold and Deadly. This is, I can't remember what this is actually called, I assume it's just the Curse So Dark and Lonely series. Not sure, I'll just hold up the one, we can, we can chat. So this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, um, all I really remember about it is the main character had a chronic illness and it was she'd come through from the modern day into their world. That's all I can remember. 
I really liked the first one when I read it through two or three years ago. I didn't reread it when I read the second book. I think this might have been this time last year. I didn't like the second book very much. I didn't think it did too much and I haven't heard great things about the third one but I am a big believer in seeing how things read as a trilogy back to back. So I'm gonna see how that goes and if I don't like them after that then it will be time to say goodbye. So if you are interested in a fairy loot edition of Cursed Dark and Lonely, uh, keep an eye on those vlogs because you never know I might be selling it. <laughs> Another book that I requested on my wish list and someone purchased for me because I while I've read it I didn't own it and now I want to read it because I do own it, The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I might also then read the rest of the trilogy because again Burning God I can't remember much about what happens I just remember people being a bit disappointed in it so I'd quite like to revisit the trilogy as a whole and see how I feel about it now. Very very dark fantasy, great main character, love this book specifically it's probably one of my favourites. Ready to have emotions about things. I'm reading a lot of like classic series that finished last year because it's just me getting around to buying them. And that's of my own physical books I think, assuming I'm don't buy anything over the weekend, is The Sword of Kaigem. Uh, this is another Angela recommendation, the only reason it wasn't on last month's TBR is um, it long. Um, this is The Poppy Wars Darkness meets The Last Airbender's Ele Elemental Magic, which I'm here for. When the winds of war reach their peninsula, will the Matsuda family have the strength to defend the Empire, or will they tear each other apart before the true enemies e ever reach their shores? I'm really excited to get to this, I've heard a lot of really good things, I think I'm going to enjoy it. Hype. I have one review copy and this is a bit of a confusing one because I don't know if I want to read this or not. Um, I'll let you know my thoughts. So this is A Radical Act of Free Magic which is the sequel to A Declaration on the Rights of Magicians by H.G. Parry. Now I loved The Dark Descent of Uriah Heep. Nope, that's Elizabeth Frankenstein. What am I talking about? I loved The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep to the point where I have like a folder where I store all of my raw footage and it, the first time I used it was on the Uriah Heap video so the whole folder with all of my raw footage in is just called Uriah Heap. Never mind. So yeah I loved that and I was really excited to read H.G. Perry's next book but I didn't love it so it's based on in the UK the abolition of the slave trade also in France and also some stuff going on in Jamaica. Also wizards and I found it a little bit uncomfortable the way that it was a real world history overlaid with a fantasy history but also it was still talking about slavery and it's to my knowledge not a woman of colour writing it though I honestly cannot confirm that. Basically the book wasn't bad but my knowledge of that historical period made it less enjoyable for me. This book is after that so we have um, I think this is Napoleonic which I know less about so I wonder if maybe that would be more enjoyable because I would have less of a but why is, why, why are these characters doing this? This is uncomfortable. That person actually existed. Why are we now turning them into a wizard? That kind of thing? We'll see. This is already out in the UK. It was sent to me on the pub date. So I don't feel a huge amount of obligation to read it very quickly. So what I might do is hold on to it, see how I feel, try a chapter or two. And if I'm not feeling it, I'm going to DNF it because I just, I don't, I'm not excited about this. Say that. Okay, I then have only two books on my NetGalley TBR currently, which is pretty good going for me. I did a lot of NetGalley reading last month. Did I write the reviews? No, I did not. I need to get to them. So I have Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Marina Garcia. So excited for it. Um, this is a noir thriller, which isn't something I typically read, but it was in the sci-fi fantasy section of NetGalley. So I'm assuming that it will be similar to Mexican Gothic in its inclusion of fantasy stuff. I don't know. Uh, we're in the 1970s in Mexico City. Excited about it. A main character escaping from a humdrum life and the stories of passion and anger that fill the latest issue of Secret Romance. She's deeply envious of her neighbour Leonora. Ooh, there's a missing girl. They're following a trail. Russian spies. Oh, I'm excited. Um, yeah, I loved Mexican Gothic so much, so I'm really excited to see what this book is like. This is out in... August. I nearly said October but the 17th of August. There you go. I also have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Jarber? I'm gonna say Garber. I read Caraval. I read Legendary. Did I read Finale? I must have done. Surely I did. Can I remember anything about them? Absolutely not because they were the quintessential. This book had so much internet hype that it couldn't ever live up to it. I liked Caraval well enough um, but I think it was me wanting to like it so much that I kind of forced myself to because Caraval has some really cool elements. The actual setting of the first book is great. The 
idea of the story is fantastic, just the execution is not fab and the characters are a bit meh and the way it focuses on a very strange romance was just sort of like Pugh to me, didn't care. I think had it had a bit more time to brew it might have been a bit better but yeah and then the sequels didn't do much for me on top of that so I was kind of fine. But as I say I think if it had had more time to brew it could have been very good and so Stephanie Garber's new book it could be great. Um, this is an unputdownable un fairy tale. Well, it's the first book in a new series about love, curses, and the lengths that people will go to for happily ever after, which is very similar to Carol, so hmm, red flag. The love of her life is about to marry another and her dreams are shattered. Oh no. Oh, she wants to stop. Oh, she strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts. Ooh, bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game. He has plans for Evangeline. Oh no, enchanting and mysterious. A lot of people have said enchanting. In fact, every single one says enchanting. Well, there you go. I don't know about this one. Going in with an open mind, going in expecting to be entertained at the very least. Uh, we shall see if it annoys me. I, I am sad about being brokenhearted is not the best motivation for a character unless they ditch that motivation very quickly. So we'll see. Not excluding the possibility that more things will arrive in the post and or via NetGalley, but I, I'm quite glad to have a slightly more chilled out TBR next month. Maybe. It depends how these page counts feel because I'm definitely not reading any of these in a day. It's just not happening. Like this this bad boy is not being read in a day. I started writing down this TBR and I was feeling super unenthused about pretty much everything on my list, which was a bummer. Uh, I think I was just feeling a tiny bit burned out from this month. It's been very intense in June. However, having talked about them, there's some absolute favorites on here, which should be really nice to reread. Like City of Brass is gonna be a great time. There's some stuff that I comes highly recommended, sort of Claire again, excited about it and some wild cards thrown in there. So maybe it will be an excellent reading month. Maybe it'll be a bit more chill. I think I read like 30 books last July. I don't think that's gonna happen this year. There's too much happening, but join me on my journey as I try and read all of the things. Please do comment below. Are you planning on reading any of these next month? Have you read any of them? Are you excited about it? What are you looking forward to reading in July? Let me know. While you're down there commenting, you can also subscribe because it makes you feel loved and appreciated and it means you'll see all the vlogs where I talk about reading all of these. You can also follow me on all of my social media. That's linked below. You can come join us on Discord because we have a good time. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. Let's go here. Yeah? Something like that. I have my most recent bookish per 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 These are the books that may turn this 18 book TBR into a 19 book TBR. Why can't my brain do? There we go. Um, I was looking in the viewfinder for the whole thing of that, I'm so sorry.